Hey guys, we're back. Let's see what we got. Um, yeah, I mentioned, so to address those that are talking about the, the nine, nine o'clock, I did mention there's a few, few days where we're going to leave, um, either a little bit earlier or right at, right around nine, a few days we're going to go over. It all depends on how the class goes and about the questions and, and any delays. I want to make sure everybody understands things. So if it takes a few minutes over, yeah, be ready for that. Just letting you know, always be ready for it. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna talk about what is real estate. This is a really short chapter, should be easy to go through. You guys ready? Let's see, I need cameras on. There's a lot of people without cameras. Cameras on, make sure they're on you. Okay. That's all you wanna know? Heather, I see your hand. I see your hand. Daphne goes like, do we get credit for the additional time or does it count towards our hours? So let me address that real quick before we start. The 75 hours is what the state deems reasonable. Of course, Shady would make a comment. It's what the state deems reasonable amount of time to go over the 22 chapters. If you guys do the math, by the time we're done, you actually did less than 75 hours and I still give you credit for 75 hours okay so to address the good one mr. shady uh, yeah you're doing less hours than what you're supposed to you're welcome <laughs> all right so let's roll we got chapter 5 what is real estate what is real estate so First of all, let's go back here, actually. I want you to tell me, what does this word mean? Who knows what this word means? Uh, Perla, yeah, pretty much. That's what I was saying. <laughs> what does this word mean? Estate. Who can tell me? Write down in the chat, what does estate mean? All right, it says land. Will you get paid? No. Land, assets, real property. No, no, assets, property. Yes, land, yes and no, property. Okay, the word estate. Uh, Heather, you're upside down, by the way. The word estate <laughs> means, ready? Assets. The word estate means assets. It could be personal property, it could be real property, and that's what we're gonna address uh, in this chapter. But assets, okay, something that you own. Estate means ownership. So when we're talking about real estate, we're talking about real property ownership. So houses, land, okay? If it's a car, it's called a personal property, but it's still part of your assets. So when somebody dies, we do what's called an estate sale where we're selling the assets that used to be owned by the deceased person. Okay, when somebody's alive, their estate could be either real estate if it's, um, if we're talking about a property, like a, a residential property or commercial property or whatever, or it could be personal property, which we'll call chattels or chattels, and then we'll go over that in a second, okay? Heather, I know exactly that's that's exactly what you were doing. I know you're doing a headstand. <laughs> All right. So real property ownership or real estate, real property ownership or real estate is often described as a bundle of rights. OK, so a bundle of rights. I see here uh, Chad wrote controlling. 
So, okay, any property that somebody has a controlling interest in it, that's what you meant. So exactly. So you have a bundle of rights because you have rights to something, right? You control that property. Now, when a person purchases a parcel of real estate, he or she is actually buying the rights previously held by the seller. The rights are being transferred to you. Now, these rights include the right of possession, the right to use the property in any legal manner, the right of enjoyment. Next page. We have the right of exclusion and the right of disposition or alienation. So there's five rights that come with this. Okay. Five rights. The right of possession, right? Because it's your property. The right to use the property in any legal manner, right? The right of exclusion, the right of enjoyment, and disposition, which is getting rid of the property, or alienation, which is transferring to somebody else. So again, same thing, uh, getting rid of the property. These are the five rights that you have, five fundamental rights you have when you acquire property. Five fundamental rights you have when you acquire property, okay? Now, within these rights, we have a few more. Within the rights, we have the right to improve. You wanna improve the property? Hey, it's yours, do it. You have the right to devise, which means leave by will, devise is leave by will, okay? You have the right to mortgage, so you can get financing against it, right? You have the right to encumber, and we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. You have the right to cultivate, to explore, to mine, to build, to lease, to license, to dedicate, to give away, to abandon, to share, trade, or even exchange the property. But I want you to write down, if you can, what I want you to write down is Right here we have, uh, as you can see, devise is leave by will. But then there's another word that's very similar, which is demise. The difference between these is one letter. Okay? The difference is one letter. Demise and devise. Devise, every time you see devise, is leave by will or transfer by will. That means you're transferring property to somebody else. You're the divisor transferring to the devisee. A lease, right here, a lease is a demise, is a transfer by the lessor to the lessee. Okay? We're going to repeat this a couple of times, but I'm just pointing it out now, even though it doesn't, uh, doesn't show here, but I'm pointing it out now. Hey, Janice, you've been listening to Mel Lisner way too long. So I got uh, Janice on YouTube Live. She says, Poco Endi, because those are the rights that you have. It says right here. The right of enjoyment, the right of uh, control, uh, I'm sorry, possession, control, enjoyment, exclusion, and disposition. So Poco Endi. Anyway, it's just a way to remember. All right, Peter is asking, hold on. Peter is asking, don't you need a permit to improve anything on your own property? Well, yes and no. It's not to improve anything. Some things require a permit, so we're going to talk about that in a different chapter. You need to know what is required in your town, right? What is required to have a permit and what is not. If you're just painting, most likely you don't need a permit, but it's still considered an improvement. Right? If you paint the exterior of the house, you improve the house. Um, if you're uh, cultivating in certain areas, you don't need a permit to cultivate. In other areas, you do. In certain areas, a fence needs a permit. In others, you don't. So all we're saying is that you have the rights to improve the property. You can, but even applying for a permit doesn't say you can't. It just says you have to go through certain steps. It's part of your rights. Got it, Peter? All right, now we have to determine what's land versus real estate. What's the difference between these two? Well, land, I want you guys to write in front of land. You're going to write raw land. Raw land, okay? Now, what is raw land? 
Well, not to be any, uh, too graphic, but just like you were born, you were born the way nature intended. And then eventually we start putting clothes on, right? We start covering and, and doing other things like we do, your, do the hair. The ladies, you do the earrings and makeup and stuff. Those are improvements. We're improving. We're adding to what was originally given. Okay? So raw land, Heather's about to smile on this. <laughs> Don't crack up on that one, okay? Hold on, hold on. It gets better. So <laughs> um, raw land is how nature put the land here. Like it, it was created by nature. And then anything we add on after it was created is considered an improvement. Not always looks like an improvement, right? But it's considered an improvement. So anything that's added to the raw land is considered improvement. So we're talking about um, the gas pipe, the water pipe, uh, so sewers, right? The um, <laughs> I just see Heather shaking her head like something is going on. <laughs> Uh, don't type anything, please. Let's keep this PG. Chad already said, field, no improvements. Perfect. See? Tag team. That looks great. <laughs> All right. So um, anything you add on, you want to pave? Let's say you have something, uh, land that's paved, right? Parking lot, paved. Uh, was nature the one that did it? No, right? Um, we put up a fence. Who put the fence? Was it nature? No. So again, anything that's added to the land, it's considered an improvement. So the, the determination of land itself is very simple. Land refers to the surface of the earth, including water, anything attached to it by nature, such as trees and bushes. And it also includes all minerals and substances below the earth's surface, together with the airspace above the earth's surface uh, up to infinity. Thus, land may be defined as the earth extending downwards to the, to, from the surface, right? Downward to the center of the earth and then upward to infinity, including all things permanently attached by nature. Sorry. Uh, what happened here? By nature only. I want you to write by nature only. Okay. So land equals raw land, nature only, as it was created, nature only. So that means that real estate, if you guys remember the word estate, means asset, right? So real estate, we're talking about something that we own. And it's a lot easier to understand by, by understanding the word asset. It's a lot easier to understand that you're not going to improve somebody else's property. You will improve yours. That's why it's real estate. It's something you own, right? So now we improved real estate is land plus all man-made or women-made improvements. Okay? <laughs> all man-made or women-made improvements. Got it? So as I said before, the word improvements includes buildings erected on the land. And we're talking about streets, uh, also streets, utilities, sewers, and other manufactured additions. So anything that's human made is now make, makes this uh, land real estate versus land by itself. So always remember, when we talk about land is nature only. Real estate, that means something was added to the land. Real estate then is defined as the earth's surface, right? Extending downward to the center of the earth, upward to, um, to space, including all things permanently attached to it by nature or by people. Also the rights, benefits, and interests in it. All right, I got a question mark. So that means Daphne is typing something. see what comes through so
so it, you're saying it's confusing because land states something similar yeah it's because land and real estate are the same the difference that real estate is an add-on real estate is still land as it was defined before it's still land because it's still the surface down and up is yours the difference between land and real estate is that in real estate we have improvements by people like the the sewer lines right like paving it putting a house on it those are improvements and now it becomes real estate until then it was just land by itself real estate is land plus all manufactured additions okay now we have something called subsurface rights and subsurface rights means rights that are below the surface so subsurface means below the earth's surface these are also considered mineral rights i'm pretty sure you guys all remember learning this in school right subsurface mineral rights all that good stuff right so these may be owned separately what does that mean in this example that we have here a landowner may sell his or her rights to any oil and gas found on the land to an oil company so I'm gonna sell the rights to the oil and gas to the oil company simple sold it to them that means if any oil and gas is found on the land who does it belong to to the oil company not to me the the, the landowner to them because I sold it okay if they don't find anything that's not my problem Thank you for that check. The right was yours. That's it. You found it, found it, you didn't, you didn't. Okay? Simple as that. But the landowner, so me, let's say, I can then sell the property to somebody else. So I'm going to sell the property to Linda right now. And I'm going to reserve the rights to all the coal. So I sold the land, but I bought or reserved the rights to coal that may be found on the land. So now after the second sale to Linda, here's the thing. The oil company owns all the oil and gas, if any, right? Me, I own all the coal, and guess what? Linda owns everything else. So you get the house, you get the whole land, but you're not entitled to any oil or gas, and you're not entitled to any coal that's found on the land. You guys got it? Everything else is yours. You can still sell it, right? but not the rights to the oil and not the rights to the coal. You guys got it? It's sold separately. We can all sell rights separately, including air rights. So if subsurface rights or mineral rights are below, then air rights is anything above the surface. And those could be sold separately. The best example I can give you guys is New York, for instance. You have skyscrapers, right? You got really, really, really tall buildings. And then around them, usually they have smaller buildings, right? So one is up here and everybody else is down here. Why? Because the developer of this one, of this taller building, the developer is this one, paid everybody else for the view, for the rights above a certain height. So I went to my neighbor. I said, hey, I'm going to build a skyscraper here. And I need you not to build above the 10th floor, let's say. So let's say 100 feet. The max that you can build is up to 100 feet. This is a private agreement. has nothing to do with the town. Okay? It's a private agreement. So I'm paying these people around me to stay up to 100 feet so I can go 200, 300 feet above. Does that make sense? So I'm paying for the air rights, for the view. And that's why when you go to New York they uh they can charge ridiculous amount of money for the view of new jersey right they charge you like two three million dollars ten million dollars for you to see new jersey it's amazing right that means they paid uh vanessa i'm kidding i was like really new jersey like why yeah i know same thing <laughs> not that kind of view but <laughs> That would be an expensive view. <laughs> All right. So that's what it is. Oh, that's okay. Heather, I don't know. All right. Next, we got water rights. So the same thing we have subsurface rights, right? 
we have air rights and then we have water rights so if your property borders water the water might belong to you or belong to the public how do we figure it out well let's look at this first it says land bordering on oceans seas or large lakes affected by tide currents is known as littoral and land bordered or traversed by a stream or waterway is known as riparian an easy way to remember this is that littoral starts with L and it refers to lakes which also start with L or large bodies of water for you look if you're looking at large bodies of standing water right not moving water then we're talking about littoral rights if we're talking about riparian rights then we're talking about rivers or streams or waterways something with the movement of water okay so lakes and large bodies of water they're littoral rights riparian means it's a river or something with a stream okay so how do we figure out if it belongs to us well if in the federal survey map it says it's not navigable right that means that the public cannot have access to it it becomes a private lake it becomes a private river you guys understand so if it's not navigable means meaning commerce cannot go through let me show you up here right on top of that page let me just put a line here because mine doesn't have oh sorry bad line okay so right here this is a non-navigable stream and this is a navigable stream and i guess you guys can see the difference right there's a whole lot of water space so it's easy for uh, a boat to go through here we don't have it so it's impossible for commercial for commerce to go through so it becomes private now do you see the red line that i put here if it's a non-navigable stream then lot a owns the property all the way to the middle of that stream and lot b owns his property all the way to the middle of that stream as well so where does your property end in the middle of the water <laughs> okay if it's navigable then your property ends at the beginning of the water and that means that the water is owned by the public it's not private you guys got it that's the difference so the federal survey map uh, federal survey map will determine if it's navigable or non navigable if it's yours or if it's the public okay Now, normally, hey, Carlos, there's nothing wrong with Jersey, okay? I just saw your, your message. There's nothing wrong with Jersey, but paying $10 million to look at Jersey, something is wrong with the people that pay $10 million to look at Jersey. That's all. Nothing wrong with Jersey. Uh, now, normally, as we're talking about the land being divided by the water, right? Normally, when two properties have a stream as their common border, the dividing line between the two properties is, as I showed you, the middle of the stream so your property line goes all the way to the middle the other property line goes all the way to the middle now if the stream were suddenly to change its course right so it goes this way and now all of a sudden comes back right it's not a common thing to happen but it could it's called avulsion the property line does not change so it doesn't matter how the water is flowing what matters is the property line is the middle of that stream the middle period you own up to the middle the person across the river owns up to the middle simple as that the next thing we have is accretion by the way where it says accretion guys i want you to write addition so accretion is addition so you're adding land okay accretion is you're adding land it's an increase of land so 
accretion, when you hear the word accretion, is an addition. You're gaining or adding land. And it's the opposite of erosion, which refers to loss of land. So accretion, you're gaining, you're adding. Erosion, you're losing land. And this is all by natural forces. It's not somebody goes there and cuts a piece of your land or gives you more land. These natural forces, increase or loss of land, accretion or erosion. Okay? And then there's another one called reliction. Now, reliction is basically creation of dry land by withdrawing uh, water from the land. So we're lowering the surface level. And if you look at uh, certain places like uh, Meadowlands, right? What are they doing? They're gradually taking the water out so they can build on it. Nobody's doing anything with that water anyway. So they're just dumping. You look at uh, supposedly here in Newark we had um, ferry streets supposedly there's a reason why I, I wasn't here back then that's why I heard right but I heard ferry street <clears throat> was water and they covered it right that's how they brought the ferries up and down so they just pretty much taking the water out and creating dry land that's reliction okay just a few terms to remember page 69 now we have the difference between real property and personal property. Okay. Real property and personal property. What is the difference between these two? What you need to remember is that real estate is fixed and immovable. This is very important you guys understand. Real estate is fixed and immovable. Personal property is movable. Real estate, so the walls, don't move, right? My phone is personal property. It moves, it comes with me. Your car is personal property. It moves, it goes with you, right? Your furniture is personal property. It moves, it goes with you. But the house itself and the land, traditionally, they are fixed, immovable properties. So that's the difference between real estate and personal property that you need to remember. Now, tangible personal property is also referred to as chattel or chattel. Whatever way you want to say it is fine. But chattel equals cattle. Thanks, Gil. I know I, you had written this before, but now is the right time. Thank you. So chattels, cattle, because it moves. Okay? <laughs> okay? It moves. Chattel and cattle. Moves. That's a way to remember. Write it down somewhere. Chattel is personal property. Easy way to remember is like cattle, it moves. Okay? Now, why do we need to know the difference between these two? Very simple, because we need to know what goes with the property and what doesn't. And also, the documents that are used to transfer the property right here are different. See, for real property, we use a deed. For personal property, we use a bill of sale. Okay, very important. There's two different methods of transfer. You need to know what goes with the property and what doesn't. And then the deed is for real property, for the house, for the, for the land, right? Where the furniture, if it's transferred, it goes through a bill of sale, a separate document that itemizes everything being transferred. Can you change the status of the item uh, of real estate to personal property? You can. Like a tree, for instance, is real estate because the tree is fixed. The tree is part of it, right? Isn't that true? The tree is part of the land. But if you cut it down, which is something known as severance, right? We sever it. We cut it. If you cut it down, now it's movable. Now it's personal property. You guys got it? So it was once real property, but it's now personal property. And the reverse situation is also possible. 
every time you guys go to Home Depot, to Lowe's or whatever, you're going to buy uh, sheet rock, you're going to buy the 2x4s, you're going to buy the paint, you're going to buy all that stuff. You're going to receive what's called the bill of sale, a receipt. And it shows X amount of uh, 2x4s, X amount of sheet rock, X amount of paint, gallons of paint. It's all itemized, right? That's the bill of sale. That means those items are yours, personal property, until you get to the house. You get to the house, you put it on the floor, it's still personal property. As soon as you build it and per uh, uh, attach it to the land or to the building, as soon as you build it, it becomes real property. You guys got it? So the tree was real estate. You cut it down, became personal, right? The sheetrock, the two by fours, all that stuff was personal. Now it became real estate. You guys got it? Questions? Sabrina, were you shaking your head? I'm not sure. You're a little far away. <laughs> You're good? All right. Uh, Gil, I'll, I'll talk about fixtures and tree fixtures in a second. Daphne, uh, you want me to repeat about the personal property and real property, right? So what I was saying is, uh, let's say you have the house, right? You have the house standing. Let's forget the tree. You have a house standing, right? The moment you remove something, from the house, which is real estate, the moment you remove something from it, it's now movable. So now it becomes personal property because the key to personal property is the fact that it's movable, something that goes with you, right? Simple, movable. If you buy something at a hardware store and you bring it to the house and you build it and attach it to the house, okay, it now becomes real estate because what was once movable, it's now fixed against the property. It becomes part of it. It's real estate. You got it? So the difference between real estate and personal property is the fact that one moves, the other one doesn't. You got it? Something that was fixed can become movable by cutting it down. Something that was movable can become fixed by attaching it. You got it? Which now brings us to fixtures okay so that brings us to fixtures that's what it is something that's affixed or attached to the building is now considered a fixture but a fixture equals real estate there's different types of fixtures but traditionally something that's attached to the building becomes part of real estate okay so it becomes a fixture it becomes part of real estate that's what we have here an article that was once personal property right like the sheep rock for instance and two by fours and all that but has been so attached to the land or to a building that it's now considered part of real estate is a fixture now some examples of fixtures are heating systems elevator equipment, kitchen cabinets, built-in dishwashers, and light and plumbing fixtures. These become part of the building. They're attached. You got it? So almost, and I'm saying almost because we have different types of uh, fixtures right here, but almost anything that has been added as a permanent part of the building can be considered a fixture. Okay? Meaning real estate. So, Heather, yep, like a screen door. Now, there's different types of fixtures. Some could be removed, some cannot be removed. Okay, if it's real estate that belongs to the, the owner, cannot be removed. But there's two others that might be able to be removed. They're tenant and trade fixtures. What you guys need to see... Hey guys, make sure you have your cameras on, all of you. Some of you don't have cameras or are not on the camera. Very important that I see you guys, okay? So what I was saying is tenant and trade fixtures, what we have here. If it's trade fixture, it's the same as business. Every time you see trade, the word trade fixture, we're talking about a business. Okay, very important you remember. 
a business. For instance, guys, obviously there's nothing here behind me, right? But there are two TVs here. There's a TV in front of me. Uh, there's stuff that's attached to um, the, the walls. And I install these for business purposes. Uh, in the previous location I was at, I had a projector installed. So that was for business purposes. So the landlord knows automatically, they know that these are installed for conducting business. Okay? So if they're installed for conducting business, are they installed for the landlord to keep later? No. We know ahead of time that if it's trade fixtures, I'm entitled to remove before the lease expires. Granted that I restore the property to original condition. Okay? So if I don't remove, if I don't remove the TVs and everything else that's here before the lease expires, then they become real property of the landlord. So if the landlord says, hey, uh, sorry, it expired yesterday. I changed the locks because you did not renew. Can we sue the landlord for the items that are inside? No, you didn't renew the lease. You didn't remove the stuff. Sorry, guys, you lost. You guys got it? A landlord can do that because it's part of the provisions of the lease if it's for business, okay? Now, trade fixtures are different from the other fixtures. As I just said, fixtures belong to the owner of real estate. Trade fixtures are for business. So trade, business. Fixtures are considered a permanent part of the building but trade fixtures are removable. So we understand ahead of time that the, the business can remove uh, the fixtures. You must, however, restore the property to its original condition before the end of the lease. Okay, that's it. And then there's another type of fixture, tenant fixtures. All right, this one you guys need to understand clearly. Tenant fixtures. These can also be fixtures installed by a tenant in residential. In the state exam, if it doesn't say trade fixtures, then it's residential fixtures. Got it? If it says trade fixtures, it's business. All right? Hey, Heather, I charge more for dogs. Just saying. All right? <laughs> All right. So now this includes uh, bookcases, chandeliers, or even stoves. Guys, there's nothing wrong with improving the place where you live. If you are the tenant, nothing wrong. What you guys need to understand is this, and this is the key word for the state exam. Without prior written agreement, without prior written agreement, that means without permission, written permission of the landlord, anything you guys install becomes part of real estate and belongs to the landlord so you install a new stove it's the landlords you put a chandelier it's the landlords whatever you install on that property it's the landlords not yours okay so make sure before you do any changes or any additions to the property always ask the landlord can I do it and if so let's put in writing let's put in writing what I'm going to do and also when I leave what are we doing with what I installed does it become yours it goes back to me. Are you going to give me some type of compensation? Let's address that. Does that make sense? All right. So remember, key word for state exam is permission without prior written agreement or permission of the landlord. Who does it belong to? Belongs to the landlord. Unless it's trade fixtures. Trade fixtures, you already know you can remove. Okay. Big difference. Now, legal tests of a fixture. How do we figure out what is a fixture and what is not? What belongs to the landlord, what doesn't? In this case, we have four different tests, right? And we call this Maria. I'm gonna show you in a second what Maria is, okay? Uh, Daphne, you want me to repeat what? All I was saying is, is uh, if, if it's about the... Um, if it's about the, the tenant fixtures, anything that's residential, you want to install, it belongs to the landlord unless you have written agreement, written authorization, okay? 
written agreement or authorization by the landlords to install something. If not, then it belongs to them. If it's a trade fixture, then it belongs to the business and we, the landlord knows ahead of time already that it's going to be removed by the business unless they don't remove by the by the time that the lease expires then it belongs to landlord got it okay good all right so let's talk about maria so there's four different tests for, to figure out what a fixture is and they're very simple and that is Maria. Okay. So Maria, it's the method of attachment. All right, let me show you exactly how it is. So annexing right here. Method of annexation. Okay, then it's relationship of the parties. It's the intention and the adaptation. So if you guys read in the book, it's in the different order, but that's what it is. How do we uh, attach or how do we annex this item to the real estate? Also, the relationship of the parties, meaning, am I the landlord and you're the tenant? Or are we both owners? What is going on? Is it seller buyer? Who's going to determine what it is? The person that attached it, what was their intention? Was it intended to be personal, to, I'm sorry, to be permanently attached or is it intended to be removed later? And how the, how the adap adaptation now made it part of the building or not? So. If you guys look in the book, number one, intention of the party annexing the item. So the, that's the I for Maria. The method of annexation of the item. So that's the MA. The adaptation of the article to the real estate, how it became permanently adapted and how, how does it affect the real estate now. Okay. And the relationship of the parties. Now, very important. Why is Maria so important, guys? Although these tests seem simple, there's no uniformity in court decisions regarding what constitutes a fixture. See, articles that appear to be permanently fixed sometimes have been held by the courts to be uh, personal property, and then items that do not appear to be fixed have been uh, held to be fixtures. For instance, if you see wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, do you think that's part of the real estate or something that can be removed? Usually. You look at wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, you think it's part of it. It belongs to it, right? But it could be interpreted as simply being an area rug. And if it's an area rug, right, the seller could remove it even if it was not specifically stated in the agreement or contract. What about keys? What about keys? Aren't these movable? If they're movable, then they're personal property, right? Obviously, correct? No, because it's, if it's the front door key, then it belongs to what? To the doorknob that's, that opens the door to the house. So it's actually considered a fixture. The front door key is a fixture, even though it's movable. So there's a few things that movable belong to the house and few things that permanently attached might not belong to the house. So guys, very, very important. Licensees should be sure to ask sellers which items are and are not included in the real estate transaction. It's your job, guys. It's your job to figure out, hey, Mr. Seller, is this included or not? Is that included or not? The floor, this this wall-to-wall -wall carpet, is it going to go with you or it's going to, it's going to stay? Very important. We just had a, a, a deal um, two days ago that uh, one of my agents put an offer on. And the seller had an amazing fridge. The, supposedly the stove was so-so, dishwasher was so-so, but the fridge, amazing. 
and it was big and it was built into to, to the kitchen. So to remove, it's a hassle, right? But the realtor did not specifically state in the listing or in the contract if it was going to be included or not. So what did my, uh, my agent do? Submitted a contract now stating including fridge, stove, and dishwasher. So it's part of the contract. The seller, even though the listing does not specifically state it, the seller actually said, well, you know what? I'm not going to carry that thing out of here. So yeah, let's include it. It's included in the sale. Take it. It's, it's part of the house. You guys, you need to know. What if the buyer was thinking that it was included, but it was never specifically stated? The buyer buys and then gets to the, to the house, opens the door, and there's, goes to the kitchen. There's no fridge. Do you guys understand? It looked like it should not be removed because of the way it was built in. But could it be removed? Absolutely. You guys got it? Always ask. We're going to talk about this in, in Chapter 10 in listings. We're going to talk about it a little bit better and in contracts as well. But uh, for today, that's it. Guys, we're done. This is the summary. Does anybody have any questions? Daphne does. Question coming through. All right. Uh, the rest of you, if you don't have any questions, if you want to leave, you're more than welcome. If you want to stay for the questions, you can. Uh, good night, Moses. David. Totally separate, but yes, I'm putting something together again. Daphne, can you go over navigable river? Okay. <clears throat> good night, guys. So navigable river. All it means. Let's go here. <clears throat> Daphne, can you see? Okay. So all it means is right here. Navigable, the difference is this. It's going to be on the, on the Federal Survey map. If there's enough room for commercial, so for commerce, to go through, right? <laughs> Thanks, Gil. <laughs> if there's enough room for the commerce to go through, right, then it's a navigable river. Obviously, that type of boat that we just saw, there's no way it can go through here. So now this is a non-navigable uh, river. So if it's non-navigable uh, river, uh, tidy, yes, just give me one second. If it's a non-navigable river, right, then you own the land all the way to the middle of that river. So this piece of water right here now belongs to the whole property, okay? So your land is now this, all the way here. You got it? Okay, <clears throat> Daphne? Okay, in a navigable, if it's navigable, if the commerce can go through, if public boats can go through, then your property is only up to here, right? And that means that all this right here, all this water right here is owned by the public. Again, lot B, his property is right here. So there's a separation of waters. Okay, you good? Great. Um, you're welcome. Let's see what else. Okay, Vanessa was tidying something, and Tidy, you wanted to see this. Here you go. Okay, Vanessa, I'm not totally clear with Hopa, specifically with the 62 and the 55. Okay, I'll show you that in a second. Okay. John, when does the class end? I'll tell you right now. The 20, hold on, 31st. 31st. That ends the class, and then the following week is your exam. Ty, do you good? All right, so. Let me address uh, Carlos real quick. 
So it should be in uh, student resources or course resources in the student portal. But click on this link that I'm going to put here right now. And it takes you to Quizlet directly. And I will approve. Okay, Nicole, you're, you're there. Perla, you're there. Okay. Okay, Carlos, let me know if you got it. All right, so. What else? Uh, John, yes, uh, the reviews all the way to the 31st. Yep, so it includes. So, Vanessa, where is Vanessa? Right there. Okay, so Vanessa, you're asking about uh, HOPA. HOPA is just housing for uh, older persons, right? And when we're talking about 62 or the 55, is because there's two different types of senior housing. Senior housing is divided into these two classes. So 62 or older or 55 plus. Now, obviously, hey Janice, good luck with that. August 8th is coming up, 30 days. Janice is gonna take the exam in 30 days. All right, so, uh, Jane, it's exactly the link I just put there. So click on that. It's Quizlet. Those are the flashcards. Sorry, Vanessa. So when we're talking about 62 or older, that means that the youngest person in this development, in this community that's intended for seniors, right? The youngest person must be at least 62. So if you are 63, you can live here. If you are 64, you can live here. But if you're 60, you still cannot move into this community. If your partner is 65, guess what? Because you're younger than the 62, you still cannot move in. But in the 55 plus, the other type of uh, senior housing, in a 55 plus, only one person, only one person in the household must be over 55. So if you, you are 55 and your partner is younger or vice versa, you can still move in. That's the difference. Now, the thing about uh, housing for older persons is that they're exempt from familial status. Um, Jane, just click, just click on the link I just shared above. That that link takes you to the cards. Okay. So what was I saying? Um, so it's exempt from familial status. What does that mean? It means that if there are minors that live in the household, let's say uh, you're you're 55, then your partner is 50, and then you know, you happen to have a kid uh, a couple of years ago, right? So the kid's still under 18, it could happen, right? Can you move into a 55 plus? Only if the community allows. See, they allow you and your husband or uh, significant other being under, a, under 55, but they might not allow a minor. They are exempt from that, okay? That's all it is. In a 62 or older, you have to be at least 62 or older, and most of the times they don't allow children at all. And it's okay because of that exemption, okay? Let me know if you have any, any other questions, if you're good. Guys, take advantage now to ask the questions. Uh, Shady, don't sign up for the free trial. No, 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 you don't need to. I pay, I pay for the service. Uh, they just throw that at you, but it doesn't make any difference for you because I include of the full package in my um, my Quizlets, okay? Good night, Vanessa. Any questions, just take advantage, throw it down. Good night, Sandra. So Gil, PSI is already open. Uh, people already started testing. It's just there's a, a month and a half uh, backlog. So if you finish today, then you only take the exam a month and a half from now. So that's why I encourage a lot of um, that's why I encourage a lot of uh, you guys to stick with the, the Zoom classes, keep on coming, uh, to keep everything fresh. All right. So it helps it helps you uh, still get ready, still still keep going. Okay.
All right, Joseph, I just approved you with uh, Quizlet, so go ahead. I'm having, let's see what we got. Some of you cannot go through yet. Shady, you got it. Gil, great. Catherine, you cannot get in. Where's Catherine? Okay, there you go. Did you click the link that I just sent you? Okay, so a few people have difficulty with that, and I'm sorry, but this happens especially if you have a Mac. Um, it, it doesn't work that well. I've tested the other day. It doesn't work that well with Mac. Take care, Jonathan. So if you have a Mac, you need to go through extra steps uh, to get there. I'm sorry. Um, give it a try again. Click it one more time. Click the link or refresh the link. It should show you this. Let me see if I can switch. Okay. So it should take you to this. Can you see it? It will say New Jersey real estate salesperson pre-licensing. And once you click on it, it gives you all these quizlets. Well, what happens sometimes is that I have to approve you to get in, but I don't have any other approvals. I already approved everybody. So see if it, click again and see if, um, if it takes you anywhere. <laughs> Discrimination. Uh, Talia, if it's been more than a year, yes. If, if you're, uh, if you didn't get a certification, uh, from the school, then you need to get one in order to go to the States. So yes. Okay. Catherine, it's, it's not discrimination at all. It's not your fault. I mean, it is your fault for having an apple. Anyway, did you try again? Still nothing? That sucks. Uh, <laughs> all right. If you can hang on, I'm just trying to see if anybody else has. You're taking pictures? Okay. Talia, send me a message uh, separately on WhatsApp. My number is 908 418 a three to five and we'll talk about that okay 908 418 8325 908 418 8325 all right JD all right anybody else has questions throw the questions now good night Mina Hey, Dennis, your credits will be uploaded uh, tomorrow, okay? You should be good. Sabrina, refresh. Let me know if yours went through. Uh, guys, you do have to sign in. You have to have an account with, um, it needs to be authenticated. So yes, you need to have an account with Quizlet and that might be the reason why uh, you're not getting in, okay? It's an account with Quizlet. Do not purchase anything. Again, it's an account with Quizlet directly. Do not purchase because I already paid for this service. I pay every month for this to be hosted with them. Okay, just make sure you have a username and password with them. This is a private set. It's only for us. So gotta have a login. Okay. Did it work?
let me know. Bye, Talia. You're very welcome. Uh, send me a message separately and we can talk about it, okay? Good. yet let me know Meredith were you able to get in Jane Carlos Daphne's still here. Uh, you can put there you're a parent if you want. I don't think it, it forces you to choose. Okay. You have to choose one or the other? Because I don't think you have to choose either one. Okay, you got it? All right. A few extra steps for Mac users, but we get there. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, guys, if there's no other questions, if you guys are good, I'm going to end the session and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, 530.